Hello and welcome back to our series on multiple regression analysis. In our last video, we talked about the assumptions of our multiple regression analysis model, and then we talked about multi-colinearity. So we talked about kind of what it was, why it was a bad thing, and, and then we went through the steps of detecting it and then resolving the issue. So basically removing the variables that were highly correlated with each other. In this video, we're going to be talking about outliers and we're going to talk about how we can detect outliers and whether we should remove them or not. And then we're going to start setting up our model. So after that point, we can kind of, we've done all the transformations, we've removed the variables that potentially could have a problem with things. And then we're going to talk about how we can actually build the model and then set the stage for it. And so what I like to do at this point is I like to just do a simple description of the of the data set, so I just kind of like to get a summary, so get the summary, uh, and that's gonna be stored in a new variable called describe df, because we get back a data frame. I'm gonna call my econ df. Um, I do want people to know this is, this is the original data frame, so it will not, I just wanna clarify, it will not be this one, and it will not be this one. So this was just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna go back to the original one before we did any of the dropping. <clears throat> And then we'll see kind of how everything is. And so what we'll do is we'll do our describe DF. And we, we're used to seeing this. We've done this a lot. We did it in the last video. We get a count. We get a mean, a standard deviation, a min, 25%, 50, and a max. I'm going to actually add two more rows. I'm going to uh, add a standard deviation metric or something that's three standard deviations above and one that's three standard deviations below. So add the standard uh, deviation metric. And so I'm gonna call my describe df. Um, I'm just gonna call the location method. And I'm gonna give this one a name of plus three uh, standard deviations, <laughs> stfd. And then I'm gonna set that equal to the old one Again, take the location, I'm gonna take that mean row, and I'm gonna say add describe df dot location, and then standard deviation times three. And so people kind of naturally ask me this, why are you doing this? Well, this just kind of gives me an idea of saying, are there any, vari any values that are gonna be basically three standard deviations below or above because they kind of become candidates for removal. Um, but we'll see that maybe doesn't make sense all the time. And then from here, beautiful, no errors. Uh, I'm just gonna display it next. So now we get these two additional rows. Uh, this one is simply three standard deviations above the mean. And then this one, three standard deviations below the mean. And it does it for each column, which is great. <clears throat> first thing you'll notice. So for example, broad money growth. There are values that are significantly higher than the, um, the max. I'm sorry, than three standard deviations. In fact, that one's a little bit over four standard deviations away probably. And so that kind of breaks the question. Should we remove it? Maybe, maybe not. Um, the reason it can be an issue is that it's going to potentially weigh on the model a lot. And so it's going to try to pull that line. It's going to try to pull the line closer to that extreme value. But then on the flip side, this wasn't an error. This wasn't an error at all. So, I mean, if it was an error, yeah, of course you get rid of it. But this was actually an observed value. In fact, I'll show you which one it was because I know exactly which one it is. If you go down to, I think it was 1998. Ooh, this is when things get fun. So this is when you start seeing these extreme jumps and just a lot of different stuff. The reason why is because that was right after the Asian financial crisis. And so most of Asia at that point went through a huge financial crisis and their economies tanked because of it. So there was a lot of debt that was kind of uh, coming due, and it just created this whole financial crisis that uh, really uh, echoed throughout Asia and caused a lot of problems for a while. And so 
it was not uncommon to all of a sudden go from 5% growth to negative 5% growth uh, in just a year. And then the other extreme value that we got was right around 2001. That was right around the dot-com bubble. So a lot of countries around the world were experiencing this pop, and then all of a sudden, um, everything was losing its value. And so people responded by you know, doing things like increasing the money supply and things along that nature. So this is why you were also seeing these extreme values. Look at it like this. You went from 11% growth to 8%, well, basically 9% growth, to 4.5% growth. So you lost half of your growth. And so that, that is the reason why we were seeing these extreme values was because there was usually an event that took place before the extreme value happened. And so that kind of begs the question, should we remove it? I'm not going to remove it. In fact, we shouldn't be removing it because it was an observed value. And really what you're saying is, is if you're removing it, you're saying, well, financial crises don't happen. Well, that's kind of a strong statement. They happen all the time. They might happen infrequently, um, especially the extreme cases. But to say they don't happen at all, um, I don't think that's appropriate. They do happen. Uh, they just happen infrequently. And so for that reason, we actually will keep these values in our data set. So we will actually keep the outliers in the data set. But let's just imagine for a second that you looked at it and you said, you know what, I'm getting rid of it. I don't want it. I don't want it there. Well, let's imagine and explore how we would remove it. So again, just to clarify, I will be keeping those values. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to remove it if you wanted to. So here we're going to filter the outliers. And so what we're going to do is we'll create a new data frame we'll call econ remove df. And that will equal the old one. I'm going to put up my brackets and I'm going to put up my uh, circle brackets. I'm going to call the numpy library. I'm going to call the absolute function. And then I'm going to pass through something. I'm going to call the stats module and then the z-score function. And then I'm going to pass through the econ df. And then from here, what I'm going to say is, as long as it's less than three, you can keep it. Otherwise, you need to drop it. So an otherwise, you need to drop it. OK, so let's just kind of go over. What is all this doing? So the z-score function, what is a z-score function? Simply put, kind of in the most simple terms, the z-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean a data point is. But more technically, it's a measure of how many standard deviations below or above the, pop, above the population mean a raw score is. So all it really is, is we're trying to say how many standard deviations is this observed data point from the mean. And what I'm going to be saying is, hey, as long as it's three standard deviations, so as long as it's less than three standard deviations away from the mean, you can keep those values. Otherwise, you need to drop them. And to show you which ones got dropped, let's take a look. So what rows were removed after we do this wonderful transformation? I'm going to call the econ df. I'm going to call the index property. And then I'm going to call the difference function. I'm going to pass through my econ remove df and then the index property of that one. And then what it gives me is a nice little list of all the ones that were removed. And it told us 1998 and 2001 were removed. So those would be the ones that were removed. And again, if I look back at the data set, if I, uh, and I'll just print it out again just to show you. <clears throat> 1998, we start getting some of these extreme values. I mean, even look here, consumption growth, down 9%. Nowhere else, I don't think there was a negative one in this entire data set. There, there was one. <laughs> and then uh, gross capital formation, that dropped, a, like that was a ton. That's like negative 30%, um, just huge drops. But I mean, it was, again, it was a crisis by any definition. And then 2001, we again started seeing some more extreme values. Again, not as bad as the Asian financial crisis, but enough to kind of um, see those extreme ones. So that's all that is. So those were the ones that were marked for removal. And again, for demonstration purposes, if you wanted to remove them, that's how you would. But 
going forward for the model building, we're keeping them. We're keeping them because what we are saying is we recognize there are financial crises that exist in this world and we want to recognize that. So we're going to keep that in the data set. Okay, so now we can start building the model. We've done the expiration component. We looked for outliers and we determined we're not going to remove any. We uh, described the data set. We talked about multicollinearity. So now we can build the model. This is going to be very straightforward. We're going to define our input variable and our output variable, so x and y. Uh, and what we're going to say is econ. I think I can use this one actually. That one's fine. Birth rate, final consumption growth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Econ df after. Okay, I'll just use that one. It makes it easier. Okay. What I'll do is I'll just double check. <laughs> Last thing I want to do is start. Okay. So these have the variables that um, basically after removal. So we have GDP growth, we have population growth, all this stuff. We're good to go. Um, for our X, for our X variable, we want everything except GDP growth. So we're going to call the econ df after, and we're going to drop GDP growth. And then I'm going to say along the column axes, just like that. And then y equals econ df after, but I just want the GDP growth. So this one, I just want it. So I'm just going to select that column. So if I do Y, I get my GDP growth. If I do my X, I get everybody else. Wonderful. So let's split our data set into a training portion and a testing portion. <clears throat> split data set into training and testing portion. Again, this is identical. Naming convention is you do X train, X test, Y train, and Y test. And then we're going to call the train test split function. This is simply coming from my SK learn. So there's a couple here. I'm doing test train split and linear regression. So we're going to be using these two. Okay. Test split. I'm going to pass through my X. I'm going to pass through my Y. I'm going to specify how much of my data set I want to leave for training purposes. Eh, between 20 and 30% is usually what we do. So I'm going to do 20% and then I'm going to say random state equals one. Perfect. Now that we've done that, let's create an instance of our model. And so we're going to say regression underscore model equals linear regression and then brackets and then let's fit the model and so we'll say regression model fit we'll pass through the x train and the y train data set and that's it we now have our wonderful model so I will leave it here at this video. If you have any questions about how to remove outliers, please put them down in the comments below. If you have any discussion about the approach that we did, why we did it like that, also put that down in the comments below. So in the next video, we're gonna start examining the output of our model and we're gonna start evaluating whether it did a good job and if it's something we can use or not. So that is for the next video. We will see you soon.